In this video, we're going to learn how to provide an implementation of a pure virtual function in its own abstract class. This is a bit of a rarely used feature in C++, so we'll also talk about why we might actually do this. So we'll make a class called base, and inside of the base class, we'll have a pure virtual member function called func. So we'll say virtual void func is equal to zero. So this equal to zero here, we'll make this a pure virtual member function. And any class with one or more pure virtual member functions will become an abstract class. That means we can't actually create an instance of the base class. So we can't say base base and create an actual object instance of type base. If we try to save this and run it, we'll get an error saying that base is an abstract class. So we can't do that. So generally speaking, we use pure virtual member functions when either we don't want to implement the function in the base class, or maybe we can't implement the function in the base class. And the idea is that derived classes are going to override and implement the function. So for example, if we had a class shape, we could have an area pure virtual member function, and we can't really supply an area implementation for shapes in general. But for the derived classes, square, triangle, rectangle, we could implement a specific area member function for those classes. So we'll make a derived class now. We'll say class derived, and derived is going to inherit from base. We'll override and provide an implementation for that func member function. So we'll say void func. And now we'll output func derived class, followed by an inline. So now we actually can create instances of derived. So we could say here, base star base is equal to new derived. And we actually can create an instance of this derived class. We have this pointer of type base to that object instance. Now, if we use that pointer to call the func member function, we're going to get this implementation of the member function in the derived class being called right here because we have this virtual keyword here. And the virtual keyword enables what's called dynamic binding or runtime polymorphism, where at runtime, the decision to call this func member function defined inside the derived class is made. So if we save and run our program here, we'll get func derived class in the output. And that's because this func member function defined inside a derived class is what gets called here due to runtime polymorphism. So with a pure virtual member function, we actually can supply an implementation of that function in its own abstract class. And that's kind of unusual because really, typically speaking, the whole point of using a pure virtual member function is that we don't do that. We're leaving it to the derived classes to implement that function, but we can do it. We could say void base colon colon func. And here we can supply an implementation of it. So we'll say cout and then func base class followed by an inline. And that's it. We've actually implemented the function now. Now, as of now, it has no effect on how the program runs. We can't really call the function by using a base class object instance either because we can't create an instance of the base class, but we can call this function perhaps maybe in the drive class. So in the drive class here, we could say base colon colon func. So here we're calling the base classes func implementation in the drive classes func implementation. And if we save and run this, it will work. We'll get func base class followed by func derived class. So we can actually do this, even though it's a bit odd. In terms of why we may actually do this, 
We might do this when there's an opportunity to reduce code duplication by putting some common functionality in an implementation of a pure virtual member function in a base class. So for example, let's change things a bit. We'll make this class a logger class to do logging. This function will now be called log. It will accept a string message, the actual log message. So logs are sometimes created using a hierarchy of classes where a base class logger will have several derived classes, maybe one derived class for logging to the console, another derived class for logging to a file. And what we'll do is make a derived class for logging to the console. So we'll say here, console logger. And it's going to inherit from logger. And this function we'll now call log and we'll have the string message parameter here as well. Now what this function is going to do is output the log message to the console. So we'll say log colon and we'll output that message. But we'll say that for some group of derived classes of logger, we want to keep track of the total number of characters output to any log. We'll implement the log pure virtual member function in the base class to help with this. What we'll have is a static int variable called total. We're going to initialize total to zero. We'll say int logger colon colon total is equal to zero. Now, because this is a static variable here, we could call this a class variable. And this total variable is for the class logger. So it's associated with a class, the logger class, and not an instance of the logger class. And we're setting total to zero initially. Now what we'll do in the base class here is increment total by the size of the log message. So we'll say total plus equals message dot length. So now in our base class logger, we've implemented the pure virtual member function log, and it's going to increment the class variable total by the message length. Now some of our derived classes log member functions can take advantage of this implementation. So they could call logger log and provide it with the message. Let's modify our main function code to test this out. We'll say logger star logger is equal to new console logger. And we'll make an instance of console logger. Then we'll say logger log and we'll log the message ABC and then logger log and we'll have one, two, three, four. So this should result in the logger class variable total being set to seven. Let's output it to C. We'll say C out total colon. We'll output logger colon colon total followed by the end line. And we'll save this and run it. And we get log ABC, log 1234, and then total seven. And that makes sense because we have three characters and four characters. So here we're taking advantage of functionality in the base classes implementation of a pure virtual member function. Now, technically speaking, if all of the derived classes log member functions were required to call the base classes log member function to carry out their functionality, that would be called the call super anti pattern or sometimes the call super code smell and anti patterns and code smells are things we want to avoid in programming because they're considered bad practices. Now, in the case of call super, it's the requirement to call the base classes member function in the derived classes implementation of that member function that's considered the anti-pattern. If it's optional, as it is in this case, 
then it's not considered an anti-pattern. The reason why I mention it though, is to make you aware. So that way you don't do that. You don't want to make functionality in the base classes, pure virtual member function, that the derived classes implementations of the member function are required to use. Otherwise you would have the call super anti-pattern and we do want to avoid that. And just one more small thing I should mention, because we are using dynamically allocated memory here, we should delete logger and we should implement a virtual destructor here as well. So we should say virtual squiggly logger. It doesn't have to do anything, but we should implement it. So we'll save this and run it. And now it works, but now we're also freeing up the dynamically allocated memory. So this is how we can implement pure virtual member functions in their own abstract class and why we might do so in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.